Welcome to my channel, Sunshine Shoulders. I'm Calvin. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Your kindness, your generosity, your support on my channel has truly been amazing. I'll never take that for granted, especially my new viewers and new subscribers. I'm a 58-year-old American who grew tired of the rat race and decided to move to the Philippines in search of a new life. Well, I found that new life, and I want to share with you my boots on the ground experiences the only way I know how. That's by giving you the nitty gritty. It's just exactly what I'm seeing, what I'm living, what I'm experiencing. Never gonna sugarcoat that. It's not gonna start today. Uh, the subject of my vlog today is seven more reasons why I love the Philippines. And there's a reason I did that 360. One of my viewers and subscribers said, hey, show us that place where you're speaking from. Uh, we'd like to see that. But also, it's going to play a part in the seven reasons why I love the Philippines. No one promotes the Philippines more than me. I know a lot of times I've got some controversial vlogs and I may say something controversial, but I love it here. And that's why I always try to get my friends and family and associates to come here and at least visit, at least give this place a chance. So. Here's my seven reasons, seven more reasons, because I've made videos like this before. This is seven more reasons why I love the Philippines. And this isn't in any order. Number one is settling in and getting established here in the Philippines is very fast. No other place on this planet can you do that quicker than you can do it here in the Philippines. You can get off the plane and by the end of the day, and I don't care what time you arrive here, you can find your place to live, get married, and start starting a family, if you know what I mean. See, try that in my hometown. Because see here, if you got the money, you can do it. In my hometown, I don't care how much money you have. They're gonna run your credit report. You better have a high enough credit score. They're gonna see, hey, has this guy broken a lease before? Has he ever been evicted? See, I don't care how much money you got, but over here, if you got the money, you can do all of that within 24 hours of you getting here. And it's a legitimate established, okay, where you're dug in over here. And see, I love that because I'm impatient. And that's because of the society I grew up in, see, but over the years, I've become a lot more patient, but when you first get over here, you ain't trying to stand around, wait around for a credit report to come back. Uh, you don't have time to date a woman three or four months and all of that to get to know each other yeah, and everything like that. So yeah, settling in and getting establishments very, very fast here. I like it. It's one of the reasons why I fell in love with this place. Number two is, 30% of the population live in Metro Manila and Cebu City. Why do I love that? Because once you get outside of those two metropolis, uh, the Philippines opens up. And that's why I did that pan panoramic view. You see a Philippines that you've never seen before. See, once you get out of Manila, Metro Manila and Cebu City, this place is like a big farm. It's vast, it's diverse, it's quiet. It's safe. Yeah, see, where all those people are in those places goes all the crime, goes all the negativity, all the riffraff that the Philippines gets a bad reputation for. It's all there in those two places. You get outside of there, you go to a place like Ormuk City, 230,000 people, about 100 crime incidents. It has the lowest uh, crime rate in the Philippines. And then, you know, you come to a place like San Carlos City, it's the crime rate is just as low. Yeah, so let them have all of that. 30 million, almost 30 million people live in those two cities. <laughs> and then, but once you get out of there, you see a Philippines that you very rarely see in the news, on the television, in these Western countries. Because most of what they show you is uh, the urban cities and the beaches. Once you get out of there, man, you enter into a whole other Philippines, a standard of living that you can deal with. 
Uh, okay, so number two is, you know, 30% of the population lives in uh, Metro Manila and Cebu, and I love it. I don't like a lot of crowds. I don't like a lot of that overcrowding, all that old crime, snatchers, and pickpockets and all that, man. I want a simpler life, and I've got that here in San Carlos City. Number three is the food. Yeah, I said the food. I very rarely talk about the food here because the Philippines gets a bad rap for their food. It all boils down to who is cooking the food, ladies and gentlemen. Does the Philippines have cultural food? Yeah, like everybody else has. But when it comes down to it, their fish, their chicken, their beef, well, I'm gonna say beef because a lot of beef over here is kind of shaky. But it doesn't taste any different, let me put in pork, than the beef, the chicken, uh, the fish, the pork in your country. Most of the time it tastes better because it's fresher, especially the seafood. Comes right out of the ocean, man, that, that, that I get. All right, and it boils down to who's cooking it. And listen, in a little small place like San Carlos City, I promise you this, over at the Marie Awani Hotel, they probably have the best food in all the Philippines. That chef and kitchen staff over there is A1 in this little small place. So imagine what you can find in Manila, Cebu, and all these other places. But I'm right here in this little bitty small place of San Carlos City, and the restaurant, the food is, uh, I mean, it's really to die for. And if you from a if you have a Western taste, you're gonna get it there. I mean everything from fish and chips to buffalo wings to baby back ribs, it's all there and it's five star, I promise you. And even the staff. So yeah, the food, man, you know. So when you first come over here, you probably not gonna wanna eat in the province the first time. Are you gonna get you're gonna give the Philippines uh a bad rap like everybody else. You're gonna get the wrong impression, man. The food over here is good. And then what you do is, once you decide what it is you like, then you can start getting your friends, your girlfriend, her family to start cooking it for you like that. But yeah, the food is very, very good over here. Philippines gets a bad rap for it. And it's, uh, it's not fair because they've got delicious food over here. They got great chefs. If you don't believe me, uh, a lot of the big uh, fancy restaurants in LA, New York, Chicago. Yeah, they've got Filipino chefs back there. Don't be surprised when you see that, okay? So the food, yeah. Number four is security guards. Yeah, security guards, I consider them the ambassadors to the Philippines. They're on the front line over here. You're gonna see them everywhere you go. These are the guys and girls with the long white sleeve shirts, long, yeah, white, a uh, long sleeve white shirts and blue pants and if you're wondering over there where all the polyester double knit went to it came over here to the philippines uh in making those uniforms because they're they're thick knit it's the double knit we used to wear back in the 70s man and a lot of times their uniforms don't fit they're too tight but guess what these are the friendliest people in all the philippines and i argue with anybody about it and they're helpful okay uh you know, the Filipinos, they get a reputation for being shy, being bashful, and they are, but because the security guards are everywhere, they're at the mall, they're at the grocery store, they're at the bank, you know, they're at the remittance places. When they see you, they're going to know you're, you're a foreigner, you know, you're not from around there. They're going to engage you. They're going to start talking to you, asking you questions, and after you see them about two or three times, it's going to be as if you've known them your whole entire life. If you're in the grocery store, you can't find something, ask the security guard. He knows where it is, even though he's the security guard. You're looking for somebody, he probably knows who it is. He can help you find it. And for those people who don't believe me that the introduction is the best way to meet a woman over here, let a security guard introduce you because he knows everybody. But whoever sets the standard for hiring security guards, don't change it over here because you've got some outstanding people that you put on the front line. The ambassadors is what I call them, man. And this is one of the reasons why I love the Philippines, man. Every single day when I go uh, downtown in the plaza and I see a security guard, I buy him lunch. I never fail to do that. 
So it's usually a dollar. And then when I go in McDonald's, the security guard there, I always buy him, no matter what time of day it is, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, I will buy him his meal. Because they give you so much more, guys, the security guards. Uh, number five is the police and military. Look, wherever the bad guys are over here, the police and military are too. They keep you safe over here, and they're great people. These aren't just frontliners. These aren't. They don't just protect you over here. They go the extra mile. Let me tell you, because a lot of y'all didn't even know there's an insurrection going on over here. Guess what? Because the police and the military, they keep it off the front page. They keep it out of your eyesight, out of sight, out of mind. And see, they're not like the police in my country. A lot of the police, man, that I deal with, which I don't deal with, man, you can't even talk to them. They put on that uniform, they become somebody else. Over here it's different. These are just people who just so happen to have a job as a police. I know what you read in the paper, man. But remember, the newspapers, they go by the premise of this. They work. On, on like this. Bad things happen quickly. Good things happen over time. See, they don't have time to, to uh, give you the good stuff. They're just going to give you the bad stuff about these police. But the police and the military here, and, uh, and, and when you don't see them, they're there. And they keep you safe over here. Now, I'm talking about as foreigners, man, because that's one of the things that we always worry about is our safety over here. So I had to put the police and the military uh, on this list, see, as a reason why I love the Philippines, you know, because they keep us safe over here. Yeah, there's an insurrection going on over here, but most of you didn't even know it because of these brave men and women. Yeah, see, so they're on there. Number six, and I don't want you to be in my comments with this stuff. L research it yourself. The quality of life is why I love the Philippines. I didn't say the standard of living. It's a big difference. I'm talking about the quality of life as defined in the Webster Dictionary. It means a standard of health, comfort, and happiness experienced by an individual or group. Yeah, see, my quality of life over here is a whole lot better than it was in my home country, man. Look at me. I'm 58. I'm in the best shape of my life. Not on any medications. My, I got regular high I mean, blood pressure. You know, my cholesterol levels are regular, you know, and you don't talk about comfort. Don't talk about comfort. I'm living better than I was over there for a fraction of the cost, see? And you're talking about happiness? When you put it all together, this beautiful woman who really loves me, by the way. Now, at first she didn't. It was, and it still is, an unspoken agreement, but so what? After a while... She does everything she possibly can to make my life comfortable and to make me happy, man. So my quality of life over here, without all that stress, see, without all those bills I got to worry about, nobody's following me around, you know, nobody's judging me based on my color. It's all about my character, see. So, yeah, my quality of life here is so much better than it was over there. My kids, you know, Two of my daughters are crying to me. Hey, Daddy, when you coming home? I'm going to come home and see them. But I told them, I'm not going to promise you anything that I'll ever live there again. Because it's all about, you know, at the end of the day, being happy, man. I'm happy here. So, yeah, my quality of life is so much better here. And that's why I love it here. And that leads into the seven thing. And, 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 and I could this list could go on and on. And that's, I'm going to live longer. My life expectancy will be longer over here. I know what you're saying. But let me give you some facts. The average Filipino man in the Philippines, with everything he has to deal with, the long work hours, the low pay, not getting enough to eat, and blah, 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 on and on and on, the sun beating down on him all day long. Guess what? His life expectancy is 70. As a black man in America, my life expectancy is 72. With all the technology, all the high standard of living I got, with everything that I got going for me over there. But guess what? In the state of Kentucky, where I was born and raised, where I live, my life expectancy as a black man is 70. The same as it is for the Filipino man over here and all that he's going through. So if all that 
technology and high standard of living is all that's going to get me is a tie with the Filipino man over here, then how much longer, all things being equal, will I live if I move here? Then you put in the quality of life. See? Because the variables that I have to deal with in America that causes me to die at 70, I don't have to deal with over here. See? I'm going to live my quality of life over here going to be better than the average Filipino man over here. See? So that's why I love it over here. I know for a fact, you know, all things being equal, man, that if I stay here for the rest of my life, I'm going to live longer. Even if it's just two years, give me that two years. Even if it's five years, give me that five years. Don't cut my life short like it's going to get cut short over there. You know, with all the technology, with all the high standard of living, the hot and cold water, you know, everything, the cars, and, you know, just everything that we got over there. And all I get is a tie with the Filipino man over here and all that he has to deal with because there's different variables. Once I input some different variables and, and, and number one, move over here, my life expectancy is going to increase because I'm going to live better. My quality of life is going to be better. See? So, yeah, those are the seven things. Just seven more reasons why I love the Philippines, man. And I know, that's why I tell people all the time, my friends, family, and associates, come over here. If it's not the Philippines, go somewhere else. The world's 198 million, approximately 197 million square miles. Louisville, Kentucky, where I grew up, where I was raised, 334 square miles, guys. Yeah, it's like living on a grain of sand on all the beaches of the world. That's how limited my life was, man. But now, I'm living the best I've ever known, man. You know, better than the best that I've ever known. Okay, so thank you for stopping by today. Just, you know, a little reminder of why, you know, it's more fun to be in the Philippines, man. Okay, throw all that other stuff that I done mentioned on top of this. Okay, this is just the icing right here, but hell, just give me the last two. A better quality of life and let me live longer, and I'll take it. So if you're in America, it's getting late. Before you let your head hit the pillow, please find somebody to help. But if you're on one of them late grocery runs, beer runs, weed runs, you're just getting off second shift, or you're on your lunch break, and you see somebody on the street, buy them something to eat, buy them something to drink, give them a few dollars. If you're in the Philippines, what is it? Eight o'clock? We got the whole rest of the day. There's no excuse, man, that we shouldn't Go out and intentionally find somebody to help. If you can afford it, if you got something extra. In this time, with these lockdowns and what's going on here, you got two pesos, man. You should be giving somebody one of them. I promise you that. Because there's millions of people over here who need our help. Because if I don't know anything else, I know this one thing for sure. When we help other people, we help ourselves. Take care, stay safe, stay COVID free. I'll see you next time. I'm gonna get on my bike improving my health even more get home she's got my breakfast cooked man i'm living like a king over here guys i'm not going anywhere take care